Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. Hi, it's Miss Zahira again. And as promised, this is my part 2 for chapter 2.7 where I'll show you on how you can find the confidence interval for one-sided lower bound and one-sided upper bound for the case of ratio for two population variances. Okay, so as you can see on my screen right now, this is the illustration for the one-sided lower bound confidence interval and this is the illustration for the one-sided upper bound confidence interval and you need not uh, draw this in any of your solution. This is just for your information only. All right. And this formula is provided to you in the formula book and so is this formula. So make sure you go and check it out. Which page is it? Go and find out on your own. Right, but I need you to be informed that this is not the complete formula for the confidence interval, right? What you see here, the formula at the top here is just telling you that the one-sided lower bound confidence interval is a value that is larger than this uh, particular value here. Uh, while the one side upper bound here, the formula here tells us that the confidence interval is the value which is smaller than this value here. What I mean is, the one-sided lower bound confidence interval, the confidence interval itself actually starts from A and ends at infinity. Starts from A, which is the lower limit, and the formula is given here and ends with infinity. Why it ends with infinity? Because variance can be as large as it can be. It can assume whatever value, whatever positive value, which is um, relevant to our variable. Lah, okay? And for the one-sided upper bound confidence interval, the confidence interval is this. The confidence interval starts with 0 and ends with B. Uh, whereby the formula for B is given at the top here. Okay, why you have to start from zero? Because variance can never be negative. Variance can never assume a negative value. So the smallest possible value for variance is zero. All right, so you really need to take note on this because um, this information down here is not provided in your formula book. So this would requ require some understanding or some memori memorization. Okay, so let me show you. Um, the uh, uh, a better view on the formula. Okay, what I mean is this. So the actual formula for the one-sided um, lower bound confidence interval for sigma square one over sigma square two for the lower bound is this. Okay, this is the formula for a comma infinity. So this is the complete formula for the one-sided lower bound confidence interval and uh, similar to the one I explained to you in part 1 chapter 2.7 f1 minus alpha is also equivalent to 1 over f alpha okay can you see the difference here 1 minus alpha becomes alpha why 1 uh, 1 minus alpha it's not 1 minus alpha over 2 because this is one sided okay this is one sided so it's only 1 minus alpha change to alpha and then new 2 new 1 here swap with each other and becomes new 1 new 2 okay and for one sided uh, upper bound confidence interval the formula for the confidence interval is this 0 comma, and B here. This is the formula for B, which is provided in your formula book. Alright, so for the upper limit, your critical value is F alpha, nu 2, nu 1. Alright, so please remember that um, variance should be a positive value. Variance can never be negative and variance can be as large as uh, the variable can be. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, at an example perhaps um, I'm going to use the same exercise provided in your module but let's do some modification to the exercise questions perhaps um, let's take a look at question number two okay if you have done the exercise from my previous video I did 
um, ask you to practice on this exercise so then you'll be familiar with this question right so let's do some modification why don't we um, add some information here so uh, we change the question to construct a 96% one-sided lower bound confidence interval for the ratio of two population variances, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is one-sided lower bound. So um, the formula would be this one. All right, so this is the formula for one-sided lower bound for ratio of population variances. Okay, um, I wouldn't want to go through the whole process of finding the confidence interval with you in this video, but I just want to show you on how you can find the critical value for this lower bound, alright? Let's just focus on the critical value here. Okay, I believe you can solve this uh, formula on your own. I just want to assist you on how to find the critical value, maybe just some, give you giving you some guidance, okay? So, uh, the critical value for the lower limit, for the lower bound confidence interval is F1 minus alpha nu 2 nu 1, which is also equivalent to 1 over F alpha nu 1 nu 2. Alright, uh, so that gives us 1 over F0.0488. Okay, let's take a look at the question again. So, this is 96%, so alpha equal to 0.04. Uh, sample size for both population is 8 and also 8. So here, uh, new 2 is 8, new 1 is also 8. So you're lucky this time because the sample size for both is equal. So even after you swap, it is still the same value. Okay, So it's still 8 and 8. In actual fact, uh, they swap places with, with each other but because it's the same number so they remain the same right so next where can you find the value for this critical value you need to open up your formula book okay uh, go to ta uh, table 7 and find the page which has 0 0.04 written at the top here okay uh, yeah in my part 1 video we look at page 44 where the alpha is 0 0.025 but now we need to find alpha 0 0.04 because that is what we need right now and then next you need to find number 8 at the top row and also number 8 at the side column match these two value and you will find your critical value there uh, in which this case I have already looked into my formula book and the value is 3.741 Zero. So you can use this critical value, substitute it in, into the formula which I showed you just now. And there you have your one-sided lower bound confidence interval. Okay, so that's it that I need to show you. Mm, I'm going to let you solve that problem on your own and discuss the answer with your friends. Right? Uh, if you have any question, you can just um, contact me or your lecturers. I hope you understand my explanation for chapter 2.7 and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye!